Yes, it's time to learn Kubernetes. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about an exciting topic, Kubernetes architecture. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration platform that automates the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. If you look at the architecture from Kubernetes official website, you might feel confused. This video is going to help you understand what this architecture diagram actually means, so make sure you watch to the end. Okay, now let's just jump into it. Pod. In Kubernetes, a pod is the smallest unit of deployment and the basic building block for running containerized applications. A pod is a logical host for one or more containers and is created and managed by Kubernetes. This is why we need to learn Docker as the most basic thing for understanding how container works. The key thing Kubernetes is doing is to compose, scale, deploy, and manage the pods across the clusters. Each pod in Kubernetes has its own unique IP address, but shares the same network namespace, which means that all containers in the pod share the same network interface and can communicate with each other using the loopback address. This allows multiple containers within a pod to work together and share resources. Pods can also share storage volumes, which makes it easier to manage data and access it from different containers within the pod. For example, if you want to run a website, a web server and a database can be deployed in the same pod and share a volume for storing data. Pods provide an abstraction layer between the application and the underlying infrastructure. As we mentioned above, Kubernetes can handle tasks like scheduling, scaling, and network routing without the need for application level configurations. Master nodes and worker nodes, or we could say control plane and user plane. Kubernetes architecture is based on a master-slave model, where the master node manages the cluster and the worker nodes execute the workload. This is what we understand control plane and user plane. The master node consists of several components, including API server, etcd, scheduler, and the controller manager, etc. The control plane manages the state of the cluster by communicating with the compute machines and using controllers to monitor and manage system objects. The controller ensures that the actual state of the system manages the desired state specified by the user and take actions to update any differences between the two. This constant monitoring and updating process ensures that the system remains in the desired state. The worker nodes are the machines in the Kubernetes cluster that runs the containers. They receive instructions from the control plane and run the containers using the specified configuration. Then let's have a look at the main component of the control plane. API server. The API server is the central control point for the Kubernetes cluster. It exposes the Kubernetes APIs, which allow users and other components to interact with the cluster. Users can use Kubernetes client tools, such as kube control, to send requests to the API server to create, update, or delete resources in the cluster. The API server is responsible for validating and processing these requirements and it communicates with other components of the control plane, such as the scheduler and controller manager, to ensure that the desired state of the cluster is maintained. ETCD. ETCD is a distributed key value store that is used to store the configuration data for the Kubernetes cluster. It provides a reliable and consistent way to store and retrieve data, and it is used by the API server to store information about the state of the cluster. ETCD is designed to be highly available and fault tolerant, and it uses a consensus-based algorithm to ensure that the data is replicated across all nodes in the cluster. Scheduler. The scheduler is responsible for placing pods onto worker nodes based on the resource availability and other constraints. It ensures that pods are scheduled to run the most appropriate nodes, taking into account factors such as available resources, affinity, and anti-affinity rules. The scheduler continuously monitors the state of the cluster and makes decisions about where to place new pods based on the current state and the desired state of the cluster. Controller Manager The controller manager is responsible for maintaining the desired state of the cluster. It runs a set of controllers that monitor the state of the cluster and take actions to ensure the desired state is maintained. 
For example, the replica set controller ensures that desired number of replicas of the pods are running, and the node controller monitors the health of the worker nodes and take actions if a node becomes unavailable. The controller manager uses the Kubernetes API to communicate with other components of the control plane and with the API server to ensure that the desired state of the cluster is maintained. Here comes a simple example for the process of a deployment. 1. The developer creates a Kubernetes deployment configuration file that specifies how the application should be deployed, including details such as the container image, the number of replicas to run, and any required environment variables or volumes. 2. The developer uses the kube control command to send the deployment configuration file to the Kubernetes API server running on the master nodes. 3. The API server stores the deployment configurations in etcd, the distributed key value store used to store cluster configuration data. 4. The controller manager detects the new deployment and spawns a replica set controller to ensure the desired number of replicas of the application are running. 5. The scheduler schedules the pods for the deployment to run the appropriate worker nodes based on the resource availability and other constraints. 6. The API server communicates with the worker nodes to initiate the deployment of the application pods. Let's now have a look at the components or services on worker nodes. Other than the pods we have explained, you'll also need to understand Container Runtime Engine, Kubelets, and Kube Proxy. Container Runtime Engine A Container Runtime Engine is a software component that is responsible for running and managing containers on a host system. Some popular container runtime engines include Docker, ContainerD, and CRIO. These engines provide a variety of features and functionalities, such as image management, container networking, and integration with orchestration platforms. Kubelet. Kubelet is a critical component of the Kubernetes worker node. It is running as an agent on each worker node and responsible for managing the containers on that host. It communicates with the API server to receive instructions on which containers to run and how to run them. Kubeless monitors the status of the pods running on the worker node and reports the information back to the Kubernetes control plane. For example, if a pod's container crashes, the Kubeless will detect this and report the pod's status as failed to the control plane. Kube proxy. Kube proxy is a component of the Kubernetes networking stack that runs on each worker node. Its main responsibility is to handle network traffic to and from the pods running on that node. Think of Kube Proxy as a traffic hub for your Kubernetes cluster. Just like a traffic hub, direct traffic on a busy street to ensure that cars don't collide and everyone gets where they need to go. Kube Proxy directs network traffic within the cluster to ensure that it reaches the correct destination. To do this, Kube Proxy sets up a network routing rules that determine how traffic should flow between pods and services in your cluster. For example, if a pod needs to retrieve traffic from the internet, Kube Proxy will set up the necessary network routing rules to ensure that the traffic is properly routed to the correct pod, based on the IP addresses and port. Now, I believe you have a basic understanding about Kubernetes architecture and how it works. Understanding the architecture of Kubernetes is very important for learning Kubernetes because it provides a solid foundation for understanding how Kubernetes manages containerized applications. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave your comments below and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.